All right, so this is example three, the third common example that we're going to look at in this set of notes. So when we want to draw a card from a standard deck. All right, so I'm going to pick a card. I have a standard deck of cards, and I'm going to draw a card from it. So some of you should be familiar with the standard deck. Some of you may not be familiar with the standard deck of cards. And in this class, we're going to be doing examples with standard decks. All right, so if you're unfamiliar with it, I'm going to talk about what it is. If you are, you can kind of fast forward and look at the, the actual examples. So when we say standard deck in this class, what we say, what we mean, is we have a deck of cards with 52 cards in it. Exactly 52. That's my universal set. 52 cards. So number in my universal is 52. How those 52 cards are broken down is, well, half of them are red and half of them are black. All right? There are what we call four suits in a deck. All right? Each suit has 13 cards. Those 13 cards are the numbers 2 through 10, and then there are these specialty cards called Jack, Queen, King, and Ace, all right? So the A stands for an Ace, the J is Jacks, the Q is Queens, and the K is Kings, and then the numbers 2 through 3. If you look at them, all of the suits have those same cards. All right, so there are 14, or 14, four suits with 13 cards. All right, the suits are the hearts, right? There are hearts listed, diamonds, right, which those are the red cards, clubs, and spades. All right, those are what, when we say the suit, that's what we mean, hearts, diamonds, clubs, or spades. And so there are 13. If you count, there are 13 of them in each of those suits. All right, so again, if you're unfamiliar with a deck of cards, this is what we mean by a standard deck, 52 cards. And this is the list of those 52 cards that we'll be using in this class. All right, now our examples. So that's the universal set. Now we're going to look at subsets. So E is a subset that stands for the face cards. H is the set of hearts. And then we want the number. Right, so this is the number in set E. All right, so the number in set E is the number of face cards. Right, that's set E, or, right, that symbol is or, not in H, so not a heart. All right, so we want the number of cards that are either face cards or not a heart. Just so that you know, in this class, when we say face cards, what we're talking about is the jacks, queens, and kings. So the J, the Q, and the K. An ace is not considered a face card. And the face cards, if you look at a standard deck, they have faces. All right? Jacks, queen, and kings have faces. All right? So the J, Q, and Ks are the only face cards. So when we say face cards, that's what we mean. All right. Or is the one you always have to be careful of. You, you could probably figure this out without using the formula for the union. But I'm going to use the formula because it's always a good rule of thumb to do that so that no mistakes are made. All right? So number in E, right? number in E, plus the number not an H, minus anybody who got counted twice, right, the AND statement, number in E AND, not H. All right, so I'm going to count the number in E, I'm going to count the number not in H, and then count anybody who got, who was in the overlap, or in both those sets. So I'm going to go back up to my standard deck, my universal set here. Right, this group is my face cards, that set E, my face cards. Jacks, Queens, and Kings, so the number of face cards are 12. Three in each suit. Three hearts, three diamonds, three spades, and three clubs. All right, then I want not hearts, so diamonds, spades, and clubs, those are the ones I'm looking for, excluding the hearts, and so the second group, that's my H prime, not hearts. Which the easier way to count not hearts is to count the hearts, which are 13 and subtract them from the universal set. So take the 52 cards, subtract away the 13 hearts, and so there should be 39 that are not. 39 in diamonds, spades, or clubs, right? Or you could take 13 times three, 39. All right, so fill out my formula. There were 12 face cards. There were 39 that were not hearts, and now I've gotta make sure I subtract anybody that got counted twice, and there were cards that got counted twice. Right, where I figure those out are, 
what's in the overlap, right? That's the and statement. That's this group here. All right, that group is in both the face card group and the not heart group, right? So they got counted when I counted face cards and they got counted when I counted hearts, not hearts. And so I've got to make sure to subtract those. So there are nine face cards that are not hearts that I counted twice. Never count things twice, so make sure you subtract that. All right, so the number in E or not H, so number of face cards or not hearts, is 12 plus 39 minus 9, so 42. All right, so 42 is the answer, and like I said, I use the formula because it's just good practice to see the formula and understand the formula. You could have figured this out without the formula, and I will kind of run through that real quickly here. You could have come up with 42 in an alternative pattern. So I've got my two groups circled here, right? The this group here is my 12 face card. This group here is my not hearts. And if you look, there's just a small set that are outside. So using the complement might have been the better way to go. I don't want these hearts that are not face cards. Right? And so all I had to do is sort of cross these 10 cards out. I throw away those 10 and I'm left with what I want. Well, if I take 52 minus those 10 that I've crossed out, that'll give me the 42 that I want, right? the 42 face cards or not heart possibilities. Right, next example. How many ways can you draw a card that is black and an ace? And is always easier than or, so and is nice. A number of ways to get a black and an ace. All right, so basically it's a black ace. Well, how many ways are there to do that? I only have to look at the black cards, the spades, and the clubs, and there are only two spades, one ace in each of those. So there's only two that are black, all right, a spade and a club. So the answer to that one's just simply two, and that's the answer. That was an easy one, or hopefully should have been an easy one. Right, the last example that we're going to do is how many ways can you draw a card that's less than five or an ace? All right, so remember, less than five means smaller than five, so a number of ways to get less than five will be cards that are four, three, and two. There's no one. Or I can draw an ace, which sometimes ace can be one. So it's like drawing, so this example would be, suppose I'm playing blackjack and I want a card that's less than five, right, where ace can count as a one. Right, well, I want to figure out, well, how many ways could I do that? Right, I want to count how many ways can I get a face card less than five or an ace. So I'll go up here, and erase what I have, circle here, and circle those fours, so less than five would be four, three, two, or the aces, and so those would be all of these cards would be less than five or an ace. And if you count them, there's four in each suit, so there should be 16 total ways to get a card less than five or an ace. All right, so this should come out 16 total possibilities. And so that's an example of a deck of cards. And we'll be seeing examples with deck of cards as you go. So hopefully, if you're not familiar with deck of cards, make sure you look this over and familiarize yourself with this set. All right, the last one's for you to do on your own. How many ways can you draw a card that is black or a face card? So this is a lot like the first example. Or is always the one you got to be careful of. Don't count anybody twice. So you want all the black cards or all the face cards. Don't count the black face cards two times, so make sure you're careful uh, when you do this one, and like I said, I'll post the answer to that later on. Right, so make sure you try that and practice it on your own. All right, we'll stop there. That finishes up this kind of set of notes, a 6.2 part one. We're going to get into 6.2 part two, which is all on Venn diagrams. So the next set of notes are going to be applications of Venn diagrams. All right, I'll wrap that up there.